Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host of the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are back. We're talking about, we're going to talk about the Kentucky Oaks contenders. We're going to talk about the Tampa Derby. So much going on here on Horse Center. Absolutely, Matt. It's another uh, it's another great show here on Horse Center. Here's our here's our lineup for today, folks. As met, uh, Matt mentioned, we're finally going to get to the Kentucky Oaks Phillies. I feel like we've been neglecting them a little bit, Matt, of late, but there's a lot to talk about there. And we're going to jump in with our current top 10. We're going to talk about each of the 10 Phillies that made our list. And Matt, by the way, we are only eight weeks out from the Oaks and the Derby, so things will be happening fast the next couple months. You ready? Yeah, ready. And it's a good uh, it's a good week to be talking about the Oaks top 10 because it's another, it's the uh, March installment of the Kentucky Derby future wagers offered by Churchill Downs. But it's also uh, a month when there are Oaks futures and there's the Oaks Derby future daily double also and i did you uh, did you hit that one year recently brian uh, yeah i i have hit that and and i've hit that in the past when it wasn't part of the churchill downs thing that's a bet i like matt and i'm glad you mentioned it because it's the only early kentucky oaks uh wagering there at Tr through churchill downs so that's something you want to look into and hopefully our kentucky derby rank our kentucky oaks rankings here will help you uh sift through a little bit matt Number one on our list, you know how much I like Secret Oath, and Matt's not far behind with his like of Secret Oath. So it's no surprise that Secret Oath is the top Philly on our early Kentucky Oaks ranking list, Matt. But it does the it does beg the question, of course. Uh, we're talking about a good chance she runs in the Arkansas Derby next. So whether she ends up in the Derby or the Oaks is a real question mark at this point. It is Brian, but it's but it's all good. It, it, it's a really good question mark, uh, and we certainly need those things in uh, racing right now. And the, the coach D. Wayne Lucas has got Secret Oath uh, on a roll. Those two starts of hers this year have just been so eye-catching and impressive. The Martha Washington, the Honey Bee, both at Oaklawn Park. Uh, the Arkansas Derby coming up at Oaklawn Park. It seems just. To me, it just seems like a logical move for uh, D. Wayne Lucas, who has had so much success with three-year-old Phillies taking on the boys in his illustrious career. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Matt. I'm with you. I, I think this is a great story, and, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Secret Oath, not only is it a great story because of the octogenarian, uh, D. Wayne Lucas, he's been around forever. Of course, we've known about Lucas for uh, going on five decades now in thoroughbred horse racing, but uh, the coach, the legendary trainer, has uh, has another hurrah in him. He's got a good colt in Ethereal Road, but he's got an even better filly in Secret uh, Oath, and uh, and of course, it's it's a nice story because of the sire a little bit too, Matt. Uh, we lost Eric Gate very quickly after he went to the breeding shed, so there's not a lot of offspring of Eric Gate out there to so to see a special one from Eric Gate before they're all gone uh, is also a nice story. She's won four of her last five races in dominating, dominating style. Uh, she ended last year with a big win at Oakland Park, and she's followed it up this year with two big stakes wins in the Martha Washington and the Honey Bee. I think she is one of the best three-year-olds in the country of either gender. I think she can run nine furlongs. I think she can run 10 furlongs, Matt. And right now, considering that Echo Zulu has been on the shelf, I think it only makes sense that she is the number one filly on our list, but it's hard not to have Echo Zulu, the number two filly on our list, there at number one. Yeah, and the number two, maybe with an asterisk, that asterisk being that uh, Echo Zulu hasn't started this year, but was just uh, uh, perfect last year and impressively perfect last year, the daughter of, uh, of Gun Runner, four for four, two year old filly champion. Um, did everything right, but you know, she's now had five workouts back this year. That took me by surprise a little bit. I didn't think it was up to five, so um, I'm not sure what Asmussen has in mind. If 
you know, if he's going to get a start into her and head to the Oaks. But with five works, it, it seems like a possibility. Yeah, she certainly is getting close, Matt. You're right. Five workouts. She's been working every seven days down there at Fairgrounds. And there is good talk that the Fairground Oaks, which, of course, is uh, uh, just a couple of weeks away, March 26th, will be her first race. Of course, we need to see everything go smoothly in the next couple of weeks before that happens. But there's a great chance that we'll see Echo Zulu make her debut uh, March 26th, Saturday, March 26th, on Louisiana Derby Day in the Fairgrounds Oaks. And if uh, she does well there, then the Kentucky Oaks would certainly be a good option. This is what we've been missing, Matt. I'm going to throw up the uh, one of her big three grade one wins last fall. We, we've missed a lot lately when Echo Zulu has been on the shelf because she was just so good last year. Here, he, here she is last year at Belmont Park in the present. Yeah, Brian. And, and like you said, uh, she has been so impressive. Just working her way up from her first start, working her way up in distance, uh, um, facing after her maiden win, facing, you know, a stakes company, graded stakes company exclusively. And, and just look at her uh, pulling away. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there were some pretty good fillies in there, Matt, including the second place filly who we have on our list. That filly is chained by Chad Brown. Her name is Gerrymander. We'll talk about her more soon. But Echo Zulu, uh, we certainly hope she makes the Oaks, but they're not pushing her. She's not ready uh, for the Fairground Oaks. We probably won't see her in the Kentucky Oaks. And they're not too worried about it as much as she accomplished. I'm on uh, record saying she was the best two-year-old of either gender last year, Matt. So the top two on our Kentucky Oaks list, super, uh, super impressive fillies that uh, could be could be the best two three-year-olds in the country of either gender, would not be something. After that, we have to go down the list a little bit, or we have to, we, there's a gap between two and three, I guess is what I'm saying. We kind of have a surprise filly on our list at number three, uh, but I, I like this filly a lot, Matt. Her name is Shama. She is a half sister to looking at Lucky. She's a daughter of Munnings, and she's been the dominant filly over in Maidan, over in Dubai, uh, since she debuted last December. I actually heard about her before uh, she had her first start last December in Maidan, and uh, they liked her a lot then, and she kind of lived up to uh, their advanced billing of her because she's been really, really good in four starts in Maidan. And bigger news than Matt, Matt is she's coming to America. Ah, so yeah, yeah, they liked her before she ran. She was a four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar purchase as a two-year-old, uh, Brian. And uh, like you said, uh, won her first start. Now she's three for three in her last three this year uh, in twenty twenty-two. And her recent win in the UAE Oaks, I think, is what you know uh, prompted us to put her so highly ranked in our Oaks top 10. Yeah, absolutely. She And, and you missed one, Matt. She's actually four for four. She's run four yeah. times within the last uh, two and a half months or so over there. She won the UAE Guineas. She won the UAE Oaks after winning her first two races. So all four of her races are in Dubai. They're all at Maidan. They are bringing to her America. She's bringing to her to America to uh, point for the Kentucky Oaks. And she's going to be trained by none other than Todd Pletcher, so Pletcher has yet another big name to his stable, and Pletcher is a, a, a guy you'll see a bunch on our Kentucky Oaks top 10 list, Matt. In fact, Pletcher's getting Shahama. He already has Nest, Matt, and Nest. I think Nest is a filly that a lot of people would have number three on the list. She's won her last two in stakes company. Yes, Brian. Uh, four career starts for this daughter of Curlin, three wins. A third, she won the uh, Sun Coast at Tampa uh, recently, and before that, won the Demoiselle, a grade two at Aqueduct. Yeah, Ness has been very good. She looks like a Philly map that will want a distance of ground. She looked like it when she uh, uh, surged late to win uh, the Demoiselle, as you said, at Aqueduct last year. And uh, she looked even better. She looked like a more professional racehorse when she debuted her seasonal debut at Tampa in that Sun Coast. She didn't beat much. Granted, she certainly didn't beat much in that Sun Coast, but she did it the right way. Nest is a very good looking filly and one that we will be looking out for 
the second from Pletcher. The next horse on our list, Matt, is a New York bred, and New York breds are kind of hot this year on both the female and the male sire. I know you like what you've seen out of Venti Valentine so far. Venti Valentine, a daughter of a uh, firing line for uh, for trainer Jorge Abreu, a former assistant of Chad Brown, and those Chad Brown assistants out on their own are doing uh, doing some good things. Venti Valentine actually just flattered uh, Nest as Venti Valentine, who finished second in the Demoiselle behind Nest, came back uh, at Aqueduct to be an impressive winner of the Busher. Yeah, absolutely. And and if you remember that Demoiselle, you know, I don't think a lot of people were necessarily on the Venti Valentine, even though she was two for two going into that Demoiselle last year. She looked like she could win the race pretty late in that Demoiselle and and then Nest kind of surged late. But Venti Valentine was very good in that Demoiselle. And she was even better, as you say, in the recent Busher at Aqueduct, where she faced some decent fillies in there. It wasn't a weak edition of the Busher, and she won for fun. The New York bred daughter of Firing Line for Jorge Agbru is getting very good and certainly a filly that deserves a high place on the list. The next one, Matt, uh, we always like to talk Shug McGahee, and Shug McGahee has a couple of nice fillies. It looks like the best filly he has right now going is Kathleen O. Kathleen O is undefeated, Matt Jeffman undefeated in three starts, a daughter of the relatively young sire upstart, um, came to, uh, broke her maiden at Aqueduct, um, and then won a, uh, a minor stake at Gulfstream Park and really burst on the scene just, uh, just last weekend with her impressive victory in the Devona Dale, a grade two. Yeah, it was a nice win, and, and I think there were some nice fillies in here. In fact, the horse that's on the rail, the filly on the rail, is a classy addition, who I like quite a bit. But Kathleen O came from back in the pack, rallied really nicely wide, and uh, she's a filly that uh, uh, is not afraid to come from off the pace. Three for three, upstart, is clearly a, uh, a sire we're talking about more and more, the young sire upstart who's got some good fillies and males on this three-year-old uh, chase to Kentucky. So Kathleen O, three for three, one at Aqueduct, now two at Gulfstream, two stakes, good win in Devona Dale. I know she's a filly a lot of people like, Matt Schiffman. Uh, next on our list is Turner Loose. You have a little bit of history with Turner Loose, Matt. She was a turf horse as a two-year-old. Turf horse as a two-year-old, yeah. She was She was kind of my pick uh, in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies turf where uh, she just didn't run well that day and she was given time off and uh, uh, Brad Cox decided to take a shot with Turner Loose, moving her from turf to dirt. And this daughter of Nyquist uh, responded in the Rachel Alexandra at Fairgrounds with a nice victory. Yeah, she had some pretty good odds that day in the Rachel Alexandra. Unfortunately, she wasn't one that we picked there, but it was her first race on dirt. After after running four times on turf last year, she's a stakes winner on turf. She's a very nice turf horse. But with a sire like Nyquist, why not try her on the dirt they did last time? And as you said, Matt, she was very good. Uh, kind of like Nest in the Demoiselle, she surged late. It, it, I wasn't sure she was going to get there. But she beat a pretty good field in that Rachel Alexandra at Fairgrounds, the daughter of Nyquist, to win. And she looked good doing it late. And she looks like a filly that can handle nine furlongs, and she's bred for the dirt. So I think that she is a filly that'll be uh, probably pointing towards the Ashland and then the Kentucky Oaks as we go. Matt, next filly on the list is, a, is, is one that I've always liked, and we saw her a little bit in that uh, replay earlier of the Devona Dale where uh, uh, Kathleen O swept to the wind. But Classy Edition had some traffic trouble, then she had to squeeze through on the rail. She was second best that day, but that was her first loss. She's a, a, another New York bred and a filly I, I like, as I said, quite a bit. Yeah, a, another New York bred. And, and I certainly want to point out, and, I, and I'll talk about this a little bit more when we, when we switch to uh, the boys later on in the show, uh, Classy Edition was making her 2020, 2022 debut uh, and was making that debut in a Kentucky Oaks prep race. And, and, 
it's not easy, and and we're we're seeing it this year uh, with Phillies. We're seeing with the boys, big name prospect that had done really well as two year olds, uh, not being able to come back and get a victory uh, off that layoff in these Derby uh, Derby preps and Oaks preps. So I I, I wouldn't by any means. Uh, consider that second place finish to Kathleen O to be a negative for Classy Edition. Just the fact that, uh, you know, it was her first race back against the good field. Yeah, no, I, I think she ran a very good race. In fact, Matt, I like the race because, like I said, she had some traffic trouble and she had to scoot through on the rail. So her first race back, to second in the Devona Dale, was good. One that I think she can move forward for trainer Todd Fletcher. Another New York bred on the list, Matt, she won all three of her races last year and they were all at different tracks which i kind of like in any racehorse as well shows that she can get it done in different places uh next on our list is another filly that we saw on a video uh gerrymander uh, i worry that gerrymander is not going to make the oaks at this point she hasn't started for trainer chad brown yet this year but the daughter of into mischief was uh never worse than second and four starts last year and uh after she got beat Handily in the Frisette, the grade one Frisette by Echo Zulu. She came back with a very good race to win. Yeah, for Chad Brown, uh, uh, daughter of Into Mischief, you were mentioning. I don't know uh, when we're going to see her. She had been working this year, getting ready for uh, her 2022 campaign. But now she's got a little gap and hasn't had a workout since February 12th. So that has to be a concern about whether she's going to make it to the oaks but certainly a, a prospect down the road yeah gerrymander might be a filly that we look more towards the uh, uh series at belmont park which of course starts with the acorn on belmont stakes day yeah those four works look like she was going to be ready sooner than later but now as matt said there's a gap so we were wondering if gerrymander is going to be a real kentucky oaks contender but there's still time as is there's still time for juju's map but it's getting really late, really early for Juju's map, Matt, because we haven't seen Juju's map uh, work more than once this year. Yeah, got a workout back in, but like you said, it was just a few days ago. Um, Juju's map, as her name will would make you think, daughter of Liam's map, another one for uh, Brad Cox. She looked really good last year, Brian. She looked really good uh, winning the Alcibiades in Kentucky, and then with a second place finish in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yeah, trained by Brad Cox. Uh, she deserves to be on the list. I think she was the second best two-year-old filly in the country last year, a grade one winner. Second, of course, as Matt said, in the Breeders' Cup. That's it. That's our list for the Breeders' Cup. Those are the 10 that we like best right now. Interesting, maybe Shahama is the one that could have some odds. And now that we know she's going to the Pletcher Barn and headed to the Oaks, she might be a long shot play in this kentucky oaks future wager matt we are going to effortlessly segue from the kentucky oaks top 10 right into our look at the uh, tampa bay derby and the tampa bay derby has come up with a full field matt shipman looks like a nice race but there is a and present favorite in this tampa bay derby yeah nice field of 12 a full field at uh tampa a, a, a nice combination of horses uh led by classic causeway as the favorite following his uh victory in the sam f davis but uh a, a nice combination there are horses that ran in that sam f davis we've got horses trying to make that leap that I was talking about earlier, trying to make that first start um, on the Kentucky Derby Trail. And I'm talking about Major General, uh, who was two for two last year as a two-year-old. But for Major General, it's a gap all the way back to September. Yeah, and, and Major General looks like the horse uh, maybe most likely to beat Classic Causeway on Saturday here in the – Mile of 16th, $400,000 grade to Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, but let's get back to the favorite a little bit because I think Classic Causeway has been terrific, Matt. He was a, a big winner, an impressive debut winner at Saratoga last year. Then he had what I think are bad posts in big fields against tough fields in both uh, the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland and then the um, uh, Kentucky Jockey Club came up as a, a big race. And he ran very good to be second there. 
So he was a good two-year-old, even though he won one of three. But his debut performance when he came back uh, at the Tampa Bay Downs Oval to win the Sam F. Davis was was quite impressive. It was Brian, and 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 getting back to that that theme, uh, Classic Causeway did what so many other horses haven't been able to do. That's come back after a good two-year-old campaign to win on the Kentucky Derby Trail. It wasn't the toughest field in the world in the Sam F. Davis, but he got a victory, and he did it by almost four lengths. Yeah, he looked he looked really good in that race, Matt, because he was pressured on a pretty good pace the whole way, and then when they turned for home, it was just a, a one-horse ho- one show from there. So Classic Causeway, there's every reason to believe that he is the horse to beat on Saturday. He's got a race over the track at the distance. He's well proven for class, and he came back running, as you say, with that big performance. Uh, looking at the rest of the field, though, Matt, you already started to talk about Ma- Major General a little bit. His two wins at two were both by only a knack, but I think he was really good in both of those efforts. Yeah, I mean, and it's always good with a young horse to to see them be be able to dig in and want to get the victory uh, by short margins. Um, but that is always a characteristic of uh, horses trained by Todd Pletcher. You know, the way they uh, work in the morning, they usually always go in pairs and 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 finish closely with each other. And uh, you kind of expect Pletcher horses to get those kind of wins. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I, I definitely think Classic Causeway is a horse I could see in the winter circle of the Kentucky Derby. He's a very, very good three-year-old. But I could see Major General being a real derby contender as well. It's early. He's only had two races. And, and of course, he hasn't run yet as a three-year-old. But I like those races at two because he overcame obstacles. When he won a maiden, he had to. He was pressured the whole way at Saratoga, and then when he went to Churchill Downs, moved up to a Grade Three Iroquois Stakes race. Matt, it was not a great trip for uh, for Major General winning that, and he he was kind of pressured the whole way in the stretch too. After a tough run into the, the first turn, and uh, he put the horse away that he he was battling early, and then he had a whole host of horses coming at him, but uh, a game win in the uh, in the Iroquois. Yes, certainly the kind of race that uh, uh, provides a terrific education for a young horse. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to expect Major General to be the winner in the Tampa Derby, but I certainly will expect him to to get a good race under his belt. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and as you've said before, if you're going to have a horse coming off a six-month layoff, there's probably no trainer in the world you'd rather have training him than Todd Pletcher. So Major General uh, is a horse I'll be watching closely in this Tampa Bay Derby. Others we need to talk about, Matt, Ship Stational, another New York bred, uh, ran a very good race. You know, we didn't know if the Edward Barker horse was for real after winning a couple of New York bred stakes uh, up north, but he came south and he rallied well behind Classic Causeway and that Sam F. Davis. Yep, New York bred who uh, uh, went to Tampa in the Sam F. Davis to make the jump from uh, uh, a couple of New York bred stakes victories. Uh, uh, trainer Eddie Barker, you know, not one of the big name trainers. Uh, at Naira, but but uh, Naira regular. Um, he's one of the, these guys that you know uh, uh, tries to fill up his bank account in the winter at Aqueduct. Uh, um, a, a veteran trainer, so it's good to see him have a horse like this. He left uh, um, ship ship sational down at Tampa to continue training uh, with eyes on the Tampa Derby. Yeah, and this is a horse who's going to be easy to root for, Matt. He's a he's kind of a rags to riches story. Uh, New York bred races to to start his career and four four tries up there, won three of them. Uh, very consistent runner. He's won from on the pace, and as we saw in the Sam F. Davis, he came from well back to be clearly second as he rallied down the stretch. So uh, probably not going to be my top pick in here, but I, I'm kind of rooting for him to run well and make it to the Kentucky Derby. And certainly he's a horse that you have to use in the exotics as consistent he's, as he's been. The next horse on our list, Matt, is another horse who I think will probably get bet in here, probably get bet even below Ship Stational, probably will be 
second or third choice even, uh, and that's money supply. Chad Brown won race. It was only four weeks ago, Matt, but he looked awfully good in that six furlong maiden race. Money supply is, who knows what kind of horse money supply is. Who knows, Brian, right? A little, little bit late starting for Chad Brown. Uh, um, that debut maiden win was at Tampa uh, by two lengths with a uh, nice late closing move. Um, Chad looking for his first uh, Kentucky Derby win in his career, giving Money Supply a shot on the Derby Trail right now to see if he belongs. Yeah, and this is a little out of the ordinary for a Chad Brown trained horse to come back in four weeks after that uh, debut performance. So he must think pretty highly of him. Chad Brown's doing well with three-year-olds uh, so far this year and uh, or so far late last year and early this year. So this one could be a good one. Six furlongs, fast time. He rallied. He came up on the inside. Who knows how good he is? I, I don't like the fact that he is facing a 12 horse field as he stretches out against graded stakes horses at a mile and 16th from that four week ago maiden sprint. Uh, but uh, certainly a horse to fear in here. Matt, there's one other horse I want to mention. I know you might mention another horse or two as well in this full field, but spin wheel is going to be my crazy bomb. Uh, spin wheel is on a hard spun trained by Rusty Arnold, one of my old favorites. And, uh, he was sixth in the Holy Bowl, but I don't think that was a great race to rally in. He rallied nicely to break his mane at Churchill in his last race as a two-year-old. I think he's a horse that could come running at big odds. Coming out of the Holy Bowl, this might be a tiny bit easier than the Holy Bowl. He's way out parked on the 12th hole, but uh, from where he will be coming from, I don't think that's a big deal. So that that is my crazy long shot in this race. Who else are you looking at in the Tampa Bay Derby? Yeah, and spin wheel certainly going to be a long shot breaking from that outside post, and and uh, you know with his PPs looking, John and I emphasize looking less impressive than a lot of the others in there. So uh, hey, bully for you uh, taking a shot with a uh, horse like that. There, there's other interesting horses for big name trainers. Belgrade in there from the ten hole is two for two. Uh, for Graham Motion with a maiden win at the fairgrounds and then an allowance win um, at Tampa. I think we got to mention uh, Giant Game in here for uh, for Dale Romans, uh, who had been third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and then came but tried to make that comeback, that 2022 debut on the Derby Trail and just, you know, did not run very well in the Holy Bull when he was eighth. He was up close, uh, pressing the pace a little bit for the first half mile, uh, uh, three quarters or so, but then faded badly. Um, can can Romans have him step back to the form that he was in? I don't know. We'll see, but probably going to come with uh, some good odds. Yeah, and, and actually that's one I do like in here, Matt. Giant game. Uh, he was scratched out of the Fountain of Youth, and you know I liked him a little then. The, this, again, the story I heard is that Luis Saez jumped off a giant game uh, after the uh, the Holy Ball and said he thought he was going to win uh, going into the far turn. When the horse flipped his palate, yeah. he's had uh, a, a corrective uh, a surgery to take care of that, and he's coming back quickly for trainer Dale Romans. I expect a much improved uh, performance for a talented horse who was third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. All right, Matt, uh, there's the field one more time. 12 horses, Happy Boy Rocket for Bill Mott, Golden Gliders in there for uh, Mark County. Strike Cards run some good races. As Belgrave is two for two. A lot of interesting horses, but certain classic causeways, the horse to beat. Who's your top pick? You know, Brian, I, I, I you know, after handicapping the Tampa Derby and writing about the Tampa Bay Derby Derby in a preview. Um, I ended up feeling the same way I felt before the Sam F. Davis, which was that classic causeway seems to have a significant edge over this field in terms of the class and the races that he's running and certainly in terms of performance on the track. I think Classic Causeway is going to be very hard to beat in this field. 
I completely agree with you, sir. Acosta Causeway, that race over the track, as good as that return race was, I'm on the favorite as well as my horse to beat. I think Major General is a very interesting horse moving forward and could run well. Shipsational, as I said, you can't leave out of the exotics. I'm going to try to beat the Brad horse, Money Supply. I'm going to use Giant Game quite a bit as my top long shot and Spin Wheel as my crazy long shot. But Matt and I are both on Classic Causeway, the favorite, unfortunately, as the horse to beat. Hopefully we'll get a long shot in there, though, Matt. That's the show, folks. Uh, Kentucky Oaks rankings, Tampa Bay Derby. That was fun. Matt, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? As always, I think uh, I want to thank our Horse Center fans for uh, watching the show. We're getting better with this new format. Brian, you're doing a great job pressing the buttons, and I want to thank you for that. Yeah, well, hey, I'm, I'm much like a trained monkey, Matt, as, as far as pressing all these buttons in front of me. But uh, I'm doing my best. It's fun. And, folks, we appreciate you watching every week. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so. It helps Matt and I out. I want to thank Candace Curtis for the race graphics and uh, top 10 graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. They're our favorite sponsor. We'll be back next week talking more Kentucky Derby right here on Horse Center, folks. We will see you then.